A bit like a husky who loves to run, the cute thief just loves helping with bike builds. Either that, or he loves treats. I can't tell. Either way, he's been extremely busy lately, hence all the recent bike builds. He's a bit like a vending machine. I put in the tokens, and out pops a frame. He's a very clever boy. Well, let's see what the cat dragged in. Ew, it's still warm, but this is quite interesting. I've not built a bicycle motocross bike on this channel yet. I suck at BMX, but with winter coming and a couple of great skate parks and pump tracks local, perhaps this could be a fun bike to have. This one's made by Premium and has a 21 inch top tube. As someone who finds BMX very small, I hope this will be a good fit. Now the pachyderm in the garage. It has a disc mount. This is extremely unusual in BMX. They usually reject new standards and like to live like the Amish. For some reason, standards in the 90s were deemed to be as advanced as they're allowed to go. There's a strong chance I'll go to hell for running a rear disc. As you might be able to tell, this dismount has been retrofitted. I did get a message from my pal at Vandal Metalworks saying the cat was hanging around, so that makes sense. This frame has been stripped previously and has a slight patina going on. BMXers often have ratty looking bikes and I'm tempted to leave it as is, but I also have had an idea I've wanted to try for ages. I'm not going to paint it, but I do need it clean, so I'll give it a wipe with some acetone. My mad plan is to cover the frame in metal leaf. I would have used gold, but I wanted to do one better, so instead I got the extremely rare dark purple. Because I'm invested in metals, I also got some different sheets. This is colourless though, so doesn't have a name, making it extremely exotic. To apply these extremely expensive materials, I'm only using the best glue, which actually turns out to be pretty normal PVA glue. It's like being back in primary school. Once the paint has dried a bit, I add the leaf. I'm starting with the colourless one first, and discovering working with leaf is pretty difficult. It's so thin and fragile, it's hard to do large areas in one go. To be honest, I don't know what I expected. This was always going to be tedious, but I liked the idea of less mess and prep slash drying time that painting involves. Now, I actually messed up a bit by not letting the glue dry enough with the colourless metal, and it got messed up when I brushed it. I decided to try the dark purple instead, as I was actually torn on which one to use anyway. Now, I actually think this would look really cool. It would have a nice texture when finished, and be unique. The downside is that this takes a long time to do, and I actually only have a few hours to build this bike. I simply don't have the time to complete the leafing. This idea has been in my mind for a while, so it was nice to at least try it. I like the look, and I think it would suit a BMX pretty well, especially as it wears and gets more character. But sadly in this case, it's not meant to be. I'd need more time, so to get this bike built today, I'm going to remove the leaf and leave the frame raw and have a ratty bike instead. With the frame back to how it was, it's building time. Unlike Thor, I go for the head, set first. BMXs mostly use integrated headsets, which means no cups. The bearings simply sit in the frame. This makes my headset thwacking tool very sad, as it loves giving frames a good smashing. This is really quite tragic to watch. But this is a BMX. Maybe it'll be something else to bash in later. Fork time. And look how teeny this guy is, very cute. It has had the paint partially stripped. A raw fork to match the frame would have been cool, but under its clothes, it's been electroplated black. Looks like the rat look is even rattier now. This fork shares a feature that inspired trials forks have, a threaded steerer and integrated top cap. These are great as they look neat, are light, and make it easier to run a cable through the fork. It has 10mm dropouts too, meaning I'm not stuck using huge heavy 14mm BMX hubs, which is nice. This rat look won't be for everyone, maybe even me included, but if I get the time in the future, maybe I'll do something about it. Maybe.
With the fork fitted, I can show you the stem. This is where things get a little more different. As the title of this video alluded, this is a mountain biker's BMX. That means I have some mountain bike components being used instead of BMX ones, including this stem, which is a DMR Defy 50mm. One issue with BMX is the bars are so tall, there's a huge amount of leverage on the stem clamp, and slipping bars is a real risk. Most mountain bike stems wouldn't provide enough clamping force, as they use pretty small bolts, but not this stem. This uses the same bolt size as BMX stems, so you can really clamp them down tight. The main issue for now though is the 31.8mm clamp size. BMXs traditionally use 22.2 bars, so there's an obvious compatibility issue here, but I'll cross that bridge later. I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty cool. Being logical means the bar is next. BSD bringing the goods with this 9.25 inch Zing model. And this bar holds half a key for fixing the compatibility issue with the stem, as BSD aren't scared of modernising their products and have increased the bar clamp area from 22.2 to 25.4, the same as older mountain bikes. Maybe in another 10 years we might see 31.8mm clamps, and in 20 years 35mm versions. Joking aside, it's time to get serious and see how this bar sounds. I'm surprised. I thought the extra length would make them the loudest bar yet, but I actually struggled a bit. Hopefully not a sign of things to come. At this point, you're probably wondering what the other key is, as a 25.4mm bar still won't fit in a 31.8mm stem. Well, here it is. A simple shem. Shea will fit the space and hopefully nothing will slip. Now, I don't have any plans to send huge stair sets on this bike, but the increased bar size does add 14% more clamping area, and in theory, the shems shouldn't affect things, so hopefully I'll have no slippage. So, if you thought the stem was interesting, and I know you did, just you wait till you see the rear wheel. This will blow your socks off. Disc BMX hubs aren't very common, so to continue the mountain bike theme, I'm using a Hope Pro 4 rear hub. And I can hear you all shouting, but Ali, that's not going to fit as 135mm spacing and BMX is 110mm. Well, my wonderful shouting audience, this hub was 135mm, but it isn't anymore. This hub has been modified by the good guys at Tidy Bikes. They reduce the size of the cassette body and axle, and use a snap ring to secure the sprocket. They left the disc side alone, which means there's no change when it comes to brake alignment. This is a cool mod that opens up some interesting options. They do this for trials riders with bikes that have 160mm spacing or similar, including Charlie Rolls' bike. You are a little limited with how small you can go with the sprocket though. A 9 or 10 tooth is fairly common on BMXs, but I'm running a 12 here. Another mod they've done is one I've shown before, where the springs are doubled up to give a more aggressive engagement. A bit like proposing to your partner at gunpoint. Big M10 bolts have plenty of clamping power, and a 14 to 10mm axle adapter allows me to use this in the 14mm dropouts. Now, that was all pretty interesting, right? Well. How about this then? Yep, I'm using a light bicycle carbon rim. The BMX traditionalists will hate this, but I've been using carbon rims on my street trials bike for years, and that's basically an oversized BMX with brakes. They've proven to be strong, so I don't have much concern with using them on a BMX either. I'm certainly not the first to try carbon wheels on a street BMX, but it's still a rare sight. Good to know light bicycle have these rims available if you wanted a set though. Maybe a good option for the front of a 20 inch comp bike too, if you're using a disc brake. Right, let's build one of the most unique wheels I've ever built. It was so weird building a wheel this small, it felt like it was a pram wheel or something. It is very cool though, and light. 
I use up my supply of bondage tape and seal up the spoke holes. Tubeless on the BMX? Well, I'm certainly going to try. Now I say try because even though this BSD Donna Squeak tyre is really cool, it's not designed to be tubeless, so I have no idea if the beadle see in the seal. I hope so though because I don't have any tubes with valves long enough. Annoyingly, my favourite tool, the compressor, is broken. I do have this tubeless specific pump though, so let's see if it works. I don't know why I'm so surprised, but that worked pretty well first try, and the beads sound like they popped in nicely too. But I can't speak too soon, it's not airtight yet. Let's add some sealant and see if that works. This will be my first time ever trying some PT sealant. This will potentially be quite a tough test for it. Still some slight leaks, but I'll give the wheel a spin and a shake and leave it lying flat on each side for a while so the sidewalls and bead get a decent soaking. Fingers crossed that allows it to fully seal. While that's having a lie down in the corner, let's talk front wheels. To match the hubs, I've got a front Hope Pro 4. I'm not running a front disc, but I do have a future idea in my head and I will need a disc mount, so this will future proof it. This hasn't skipped the modifying treatment either, and tighter bikes once again have worked their magic in making an axle to allow me to use bolts. Normally, with the way Hope hubs work, the axle floats in the middle and the end caps can spin independently. By making an axle, I can use M10 bolts and really clamp it down. The front rim, of course, is a matching light bicycle carbon one. Once built, this is how it looks. Add swipe right. It then gets the same treatment as the rear and I try my luck with tubeless again. It's an identical story to the rear. It did seat, but needs some time to seal. I'll see if the rear is done and leave this to rest. The rear wheel seems happy, which makes me happy. Time to make the bike happy and get this fitted. After some time to think, the front wheel has sealed the deal and can be fitted too. It's starting to come together now. But let's not speak too soon. The arse bearing is going to be a bit more complicated than usual. You see, I have these lovely Shimano Saint cranks to continue the mountain bike theme. They're strong, stiff, but not super heavy like a lot of steel cranks. I don't plan on doing any grinds, hence no pegs, and that includes crank grinds. I'm going to be very boring on this bike. Attached to the cranks via four points is an on one stainless steel 32 tooth chainring. It's bigger than some BMXs would run, but it needs to be to match the bigger rear sprocket. Now, the complication is that these cranks come with a threaded arse bearing, which is a lot smaller than the mid arse bearing size the frame is meant for. As you can see, this simply isn't going to work. Or is it? Adapters seem to be my best friend on this bike. These are stainless steel mid to euro arse bearing adapters and they simply push into the frame and in theory should allow me to use these same cranks. To fit them, first I clean the surfaces with some acetone. And then I use some stud lock to try and keep them from spinning when I tighten the Saint BB. Ha, look at this, it's the Thwacker's lucky day after all. Have at it, my violent friend. I 
I was honestly a little concerned I'd run into problems fitting these and not be able to finish the bike, but that all went pretty smoothly. Let's fit the rest and see if I'm still happy in a few moments. Solid. Very happy. The fit is perfect too. One of my concerns was how wide the adapters would sit, but it's absolutely perfect. Chain time, and it's the same chain I always use, and if you're not sure which that is, you'll just have to go and watch my previous bike builds to find out. Often frames with horizontal dropouts have chainstay lengths designed to run certain gear ratios, as there can be quite a change of distance between them. In this case, it's a bit of an odd ratio, and with no mods, my rear wheel sits very close to the end of the dropout. But you know me, I'm not scared to be drastic to get the end result I want. Out comes the Dremel to remove some material from the front of the dropout. If I can get my wheel to sit just a couple of millimetres further forward, I can remove a link from the chain and reap all the benefits of shorter chain stays. Next up, I'm going to fit the saddle and post and ruin any resemblance of a colour scheme. The post isn't really mountain bike specific, but it is from a mountain bike brand, DMR, and is meant for railed saddles. Speaking of saddles, here's a well used one from my own collection. Bonus points if you can tell me which bike this was previously on. It's a nice small, tough perch and should suit the bike well. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm into that. The frame and hub have disc mounts, so of course I'm going to fit a rear disc. I don't mind riding brakeless, but a brake would be nice to ease me onto the bike. Plus, pump tracks are scary brakeless, especially when there's kids on them who aren't that aware of their surroundings, drop in in front of you, go the wrong way, or stop on the jumps, or... Well, you get the idea. The brake would be my favourite and personal recommendation, the Hayes Dominion A4. I'm pretty sure the mount is for a 160mm rotor, so I'll be using this matching haze one. Like my retro Cannondale build, I use these stick on hose guys to neaten things up. For my lower paws, I have these inspired nylon pedals. Plastic pedals are common in BMX, so these bridge the gap nicely between BMX and mountain bike. Plus, they're pretty grippy as a bonus. Another nice bridge between the two disciplines are these ODI grips. They're the long neck models which are iconic in the BMX world, but are lock-ons from the mountain bike world. And I think that about wraps up the build. I'll just make sure things are straight and tight and then see how it feels. Well, it certainly manuals nicely. Like with all BMXs I've tried, I do struggle to use full power on bunny hops as the timing is so different. I feel if I tried 100% I'd end up doing half a backflip. But it's no surprise that it's pretty decent on the rear wheel though. I think I should stick on a trial stem, light gear, front brake and see how it feels as a trials bike next. 
In the meantime, I'll try to get used to how twitchy it is and see if I can even learn some new tricks. I am a pretty old dog though. Even though it's more ratty than I'd originally planned, I think it still looks cool. I don't think you could argue it's not unique anyway. The cute thief came to check out the end result too. He's hard to read, so he either likes it or is looking for the ratty I keep on going on about. I'll tell you what though, I might have to cut down on the bike builds and treats. He is looking a little fatty, isn't he? Back to the bike, I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. I do think this is a pretty decent mix between the BMX and mountain bike world. Perhaps we should change it to MMX or BMB? Do you have any suggestions? That said, this still is a compromise. I can't realistically grind on these cranks and I'm not sure how strong these hubs would be with pegs. Tubeless doesn't like heavy sideways landings either, so I'd have to be careful there too. But for someone like me who's not interested in grinds or huge street riding, I think it's perfectly usable. The proof will be in the riding though. As with all my builds, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much once again for watching, have a wonderful week, and I'll be seeing you next time. Take care everyone, bye bye.